So once the sense of community was fragmented into these disconnected traditional family value units, what resulted from that further uh, was this idea that uh, I take care of my own. Uh, some man starving to death, he's not mine, he's not my family, I don't have to worry about him, I take care of my own. Uh, say somebody's sick and dying, I don't want to have anything to do with it. But you know, this man here beats his wife and uh, hires her out for, uh, uh, you know, as a sex slave. Well, I don't want to get involved in that, that's none of my business, I can't do anything about that. I'm not going to get involved. Uh, and part of this was this idea that people are essentially evil. Uh, this idea comes from a book called Leviathan that was written by Thomas Hobbes. I, I believe it was published around 1698 or something like that. Uh, and its basis, it, it has a basis in natural law. Uh, you know, in other words, uh, if, if you don't allow people to have water and food and, and uh, shelter, what's the sense? But uh, on the other hand, it was tempered by the, his idea that people are essentially evil. And one of, the, um, one of the followers of this was James Madison. Uh, James Madison was a sort of... Um, well, you didn't really know. Was he a Federalist or was he a Democratic Republican? He he was, uh, he's he, he's apparently one of the writers of the Federalist Papers, but he appeared to be a Democratic Republican. He he pretty much followed all of their um, particular views, and the Democratic Republicans also adhered to this idea that uh, people are essentially evil. Uh, this is contrasted with the ideas laid down by Blackstone in his commentaries in the, on the law of England. Rather than saying that people are essentially evil, uh, his conclusion is, is that uh, people mean to do well, but that people have certain human weaknesses. And that's, that, that's something that's entirely different because from the one you have the idea of liberalism and from the other you have the idea of people have to be controlled you have to control people because if you allow them to be free they're going to do evil things it's the natural predisposition the the whole thing with adam and eve and you know the whole bit uh so that was one of the things that, that uh, arose from this, was the idea, you know, I take care of my own, it's a separate family unit, and you could still do things in terms of assembly, you could go to funerals, you could go to weddings, but, uh, you know, some of the more far out things were like going to church because whoa man that's you know and it's a pretty big assembly but it, it had to do with church and uh, you know uh, a man priest and all that and he's going to be able to handle everybody with the bible and fire and brimstone so that was cool that was all right that it was reasonably safe doing things like that uh and this this sort of idea has always uh carried forward through American society. The, the opposition to labor unions, for instance. What, why are these people, you can't allow labor to assemble like this. The, this is going to ruin it for us. You know, we got a good thing going here with this company. We can't let these people organize and have some sort of decent lifestyle. Uh, we just can't let it happen. These people have to be controlled. So that aspect of society, is, to me, is seen um, 
as a contrast with the uh, Occupy Wall Street, because what the Occupy Wall Street assemblies prove, uh, very similar to the original Woodstock, is that you can have a large assembly of people over uh, an extended period of time uh, who are essentially peaceful. That all of the things, all the boogeymen's that were erected by all of these conservatives trying to convince people that assemblies have to be curtailed and uh, the rights to assemble have to be abridged uh, and so on and so forth are disproven. It shows that uh, these the assemblies show that all of that is false. And that adds to the fears that conservatives have. But at the same time, they're seeing that all these misconceptions that they that, that they had imposed upon them over the years throughout their life are false. So that's a, a, a very good aspect of this whole thing. And the longer that they last, the more convinced the uh, greatest number of people are going to be. You know, you're still going to have uh, these diehard conservatives that are, are afraid that, you know, this is going to ruin their thing. Uh, but uh, by and large, the, the greater number of people are going to realize that everything that they're telling them about assemblies and whatnot is, is a crock of shit. Uh, it's very similar, too, with the standards that are imposed upon people. You know, if you're a family, if you're a man, there's certain things you're supposed to do. Uh, you know, if you're a woman, there's certain things that you're not supposed to do. Uh, how, you, how you raise your children and all that. People have essentially evolved beyond that. Uh, and the the increasing the the increasing rate of this evolution um, uh, has is dramatically seen from the 1970s onward. Uh, people are just so much different. Uh, the the arrangements that people have, you know, you have the single parent families, you have uh, gay people adopting children and things like that. It's it's a whole different mix. Uh, and from that, uh, you have different values that people have just developed and have, have just evolved by essentially being let alone, by just being free. There's conflicts with that, and there's people that oppose it, but still it's nonetheless there. Now, conservatives, of course, try to obfuscate this. They try to make you feel as though some sort of... Uh, some sort of relationship exists that never did, or that some sort of a standard that they want to apply is the right standard, it's the right way to act. But once you analyze this and, and discover where these things arose, uh, you, you see the bogus nature of them. Uh, So once people see these things, the, the relationship between people assembling for the purpose of just allowing evolution to proceed, like the, people refer to it as a watershed issue. You could dam something up for so long, but you can't dam freedom. Uh, even this guy Bradley, Justice Bradley, that came up with some pretty bad decisions after the 14th Amendment, became part of the Constitution, and in regard to the 14th Amendment and the 11th Amendment and so on and so forth, uh, in his dissent in the slaughterhouse cases, uh, had a very succinct statement. Tyranny is transitory. 